it all began when I was probably born. <laughs> When it comes to the how did you become an artist question, it is it feels like it's in my blood. If I am not singing or dancing or dreaming, I'm I'm half dead. My name is Ali Clinch, and I'm an applied theatre facilitator. I got into uh, the theatre life in about high school, about year nine. Often you will hear people say, if you can do anything other than act, do it. You don't know when your next gig's coming. You don't have steady income. It's emotionally draining work. Most people who do pursue it, they can't do anything else. Nothing else brings me the joy that, that working on the stage does. I moved from Brisbane to Canberra in 2011. I'm a Canberra girl, born and bred, but I went there to study. And, and I remember when I moved back, my colleagues in Brisbane said, what are you doing? This is uh, career suicide. You've got everything working so well for you up here. There's nothing in Canberra. And they couldn't have been more wrong. So people don't really realise all the stuff that's happening here, but there's a lot of work going on. An average day for me is an unusual day. I usually start here at home, planning lessons or grant applications or rehearsals for myself and then usually I hit the road somewhere around Canberra, me the running workshops, uh, afternoons are usually teaching so I usually come back either to the studio or to a community centre nearby and somewhere in all of there I'm also a parent and a primary carer for, for my dad with dementia so I've, I guess my phone is on silent but I've always got that awareness throughout my days that, that I'm on call. So one of my biggest projects at the moment is a project called Mothering Father. I'm having this really unique experience where at the same time that my son was born my father became critically ill. I'm at the moment living this life where I'm caring for, for two, two boys, one at the beginning of their life and one at the end as they sort of, they pass one another in terms of their abilities to, to use language and toileting and communicating with the outside world and independence to get dressed. I'm having these experiences, why not channel this really unique experience into my artwork and so I've decided to start writing about my daily experiences with my dad and my son and it seems to be working. <laughs> I've got um, a monologue that's been um, accepted into a few shows and uh, I hope to keep writing some other pieces that will hopefully then come together maybe next year to be a, to be a complete work. In the first 12 months of becoming a mum I tried to separate them. I tried to be like at the moment I'm a mother and later today I'm going to be an artist and, and I forever felt tension and I think it's actually been quite recent that I realised that, that, that there's, no, there's no break, it's not two separate things and that I don't switch one off. A child and an actor, they're very similar. Our job as an actor is to find our inner child and to be playful and once I've finally let go of the idea that the two are separate and brought them together, I think I was much more at peace. The biggest creative influence in my life is probably Disney. Like, I want to say it's Shakespeare, because that's what you should say, but it's not. Like, Walt well, Disney's work is, has been in my life as long as I can remember. His songs are the songs that I go to when I sing to my son, when I'm looking for songs for my students, and um, magic is what we all need to have, you know, to believe in or get through the rough days and, and no one does magic quite as well as Disney. I used to be the artistic director of a group called Acting Crazy and it was a group for anyone who experienced disadvantage due to mental illness or um, disabilities like brain damage. And I was very, very much just starting out. I was just finished my degree at uni and I was blindly jumping headfirst into this group but the best moment was a guy called Jono. He was a mute and just one day just stood up without a carer and just said what are you doing? And the whole room, there's probably 25 of us, were like oh my gosh. I think that's probably the best moment for me for my career is that from that moment on when we did drama, he didn't talk any other time, but when we did drama, 
Jono spoke and he used his words. <sighs> My biggest dream is what if everything I did was just as validated as what my husband did. I don't think I'd be struggling as much if there was the right recognition, whether it's numerical or social, to get to any big dream point in terms of whether it's performing at the Sydney Opera House or getting my play published and earning a great income. It all comes back to the fact that every minute of my day is just like insanely scheduled and crazy because of the role that I have to play and that I'm willing to play and that I, I don't want anybody else to do this, this is my job, but because it's not recognised the way that other jobs are recognised, you can't, you, yeah, it's difficult to, to, to leap further than all that I am right now, I guess.